Hello, this is Dr. James, and today I'm going to talk about a pretty neat Marx generator that I built. This is a 1.6 megavolt Marx generator. Okay, so the way it works, uh, for you for the people that are familiar with uh, Marx generators, is they have a bunch of capacitors, and you charge the pas capacitors up in parallel, and then you have a bunch of spark gaps, and you discharge them in series. Now, the spark gaps are actually on the inside, and uh, this is a Van de Graaff sphere at the top. I put that there because I want to be able to hold off the voltage so we can get some high voltage on this. Let's take a look at this from another angle. Okay, so here, here's a side view of the device. You can see it. It's almost as tall as I am. And um, have the bottom there. Let's make sure I'm not getting my head cut off or something. There we go. So, if you look along here, there's a bunch of capacitors, and a bunch of capacitors on this side. I put them on either side so I could pack a bunch of them in. And the spark gaps are right in between these, and they're down the middle of the tube. And these are the resistors. And this is this is a pretty neat concept here. Let's take a little bit closer look at this this guy. So. I found out that if you use normal resistors, I was doing smaller Marx generators, of course they will arc across them and uh, you know they, they have a small radius. If you have a larger, smoother radius then you can um, get a higher voltage. And what th these things are here, I don't know if you can see that, this, these are radiator hose tubing and I actually took my voltmeter, D uh, digital uh, ohm meter to the uh, auto parts store and I was measuring I think that they were about a, a mega ohm per centimeter or something like that. And of course, you don't want them touching each other. I tried to tweak this thing up a little bit. But, um, so here's our capacitors 30 kV capacitors at 500 picofarads. Okay. Our Van de Graaff sphere at the top. And uh, these things, see, they have a nice big radius. They have. Uh, I forget what it was, maybe 10 mega ohms per uh, per loop here. I looped them around, looped them around to charge either the charging resistors in the Marx generator. And uh, well, it goes all the way down to the bottom. And they hold off the voltage, they don't break. I actually got, you know, because there's no um, spec on how much conductivity there should be in radiator hose. I uh, bought a whole roll of it, so it was all the same uh, batch. And then these are the charging resistors coming off. I actually found that there's a significant droop in the uh, voltage as I charge from from uh, where the, the resistors are or the capacitors are charged to the other end. So if I charge the marks from the top or the bottom, there'd be a huge droop. So I'm actually charging the marks from the center of it, so that kind of splits the difference. And uh, so I've been taking this thing and cleaning it up. And uh, when I ran it before, it was producing lightning bolts out of the top sphere, about a foot long, out into thin air. It's pretty impressive. Okay, so the next thing we'll do, I guess, is see if we can get a charging supply. Well, let's let's take a look at the spark gaps first. See, I don't know if you can see. I drilled holes here so I could fiddle with the spark gaps. There's a bunch of spark gaps in the middle here, and let's let's take off the top, and we will look down the center. I don't know if you can see down the center. If we look down the center, it's just rows and rows of spark gaps all the way down. And I had to tweak all those so they're about the same same distance apart. And get this thing all tuned up. It's like an instrument. It's all got to be tuned up so it operates properly. And, uh, there we go. Magnificent, huh? So let's see if we can fire this baby up. Okay, here we go. We have set up here some uh, high voltage stuff. Let's take a little tour of this. So, what this is, is this is a AC high voltage power supply that drives a flyback transformer that I got from uh, Information Unlimited, I believe. And then this is a, you can't see it inside, it's a, but I think I had another video talking about how to build high voltage uh, a Walton Cockroft uh, 
voltage multipliers. It's got a bunch of high voltage diodes and capacitors in there to rectify the voltage and step it up to about 30 kV, which is what we're going to need for our Super March generator here. And then we have a high voltage uh, probe here to measure the power, the voltage that we got. So let's try turning this thing on. I don't know if you can see that. Let's try. If you can see the needle there. What we're going to do is we're going to flip this power switch here on. And then uh, the needle came up to about 20 kV. And we can kind of tune stuff around on this guy. Okay. And we'll bring it up to about 30. Okay. I don't know if you can see that. I don't want to get too close because I don't want to get shocked. But it's up to 30 kV now. So we'll flip the switch off. And we'll hook it up to the marks. And haven't run this marks in a long time. We'll see if the thing will work. Okay, so what we've done is we've taken the charging resistors and we hooked it up to one side of the Walton Cockcroft, the negative, and the other side to the positive. And we will, let's say, turn this power supply on, put the switch down here. Oh, and it is charging. This thing. Let's, let's take a look over here. Not a lot of things that scare me, but this thing does. This thing is extremely dangerous. One thing to keep in mind is you want to keep all high voltage cables away from each other because uh, high voltage travels through the air and it will short out and do all sorts of other nasty things you don't want it to. Uh oh. Okay, something bad was happening. It was burning out the neon lamp. Let's take a look at that. Okay, I did have a little neon lamp on there to indicate if there's current going through there. Because sometimes I can't see, you know, from the charging supply to the, the mul multiplier. And it looks like it really melted it. I'm not sure what was the deal with that. But, um, let's, uh, also I didn't like how close those charging resistors were together. So I put, put a plastic thing to kind of hold them apart. And we will turn her back on, and we are above 30 kV, so according to my calculations, this thing should be dangerous. I rotated it a little bit. It might be too humid out here. But I, I hate running it in the house because last time I ran it in the house I had it about three feet away from a computer power supply and it, it blew that power supply out from the EMP. So I, I really, really am nervous. I remember last year, it's been about ten years since I've run this thing and it seemed like it took a while for it to charge up but it really scared me when it went off. So could be too humid out here, or maybe that's why it's, it's an air-insulated uh, Marx generator. There's no oil or anything around it, so the humidity could be causing the stages to charge down too quickly. And uh, it's been charging for a while. I'm going to be afraid to touch it for a long time. Hmm. Maybe I have to clean out the inside too. I noticed a bunch of spiders built spider webs in there, so maybe that's causing it to discharge internally. Seems like it should have should have discharged by now if it's going to. We got over 35 kV charging on it, so some of those capacitors should be getting up to full voltage and breaking down. 
that should cause a chain reaction and cause the rest of the marks to break down. Well, one thing also I wanted to mention is that my original marks, I found I was using some uh, some cheap Russian capacitors that I got off of eBay, and they were much smaller uh, ferritage, and um, it, it was not enough. You have to have a critical energy in the capacitors. I think it's because breaking down the spark gaps requires energy. You have to have a critical energy in the capacitors in order to uh, get the marks to fire. So I actually had to redesign with these much bigger capacitors, the 500 picofarads. And uh, yeah, this is concerning because I should have done something by now. Uh, it's like a loaded gun. I. This, this thing can definitely kill you if it goes off. It is really high voltage and high power. And let's take a look. Here we are. Definitely ch charging at over 30 kV here. 35. And I'm not seeing any action yet. try something else. Take a look at it and see what's going on here. Okay, here we are. We're checking the resistances and I have the clip leads clipped across uh, one, one uh, capacitor length and uh, the resistance is 1.2 mega ohms per loop and it's about the same no matter, let's say I clip it across this one. So it's two resistors and so it's about twice that. And so, just checking out all the resistors and the charging chain. The only thing that could possibly go wrong that I can imagine is that either a capacitor blew or something's broken in the charging chain. Um, so I will continue to uh, look through the resistances, check them first since they're easiest. Maybe the spark gap is out of adjustment. Maybe the when, they, when I moved, they uh, widened up, so I may have to go through and tune up each of them. I'm not really looking forward to that, because tuning 50 spark gaps is quite a chore. But anyway, so it looks like the resistances are fine, and it's about uh, 1.2 mega ohms per stage. There, I'll put it back on across one stage. And so these radiator hoses do make pretty nice resistors. Okay, there, there we go. So we'll continue to troubleshoot the marks. Okay, I think I figured out what the problem is. I'm not sure if my charge resistors got replaced or something, but they seem to be absolutely non-conducting. So, clip the leads across there and basically zero resistance. Here, we'll, we'll touch the leads together. And so I, I have some new radiator hose here, and uh, we'll just clip across a little section of it here. Now we can see that's uh, not as high a resistance as the other ones. It's only 80 some k, but I think the, through the whole length it will give us about a meg. Hopefully that'll be enough. Maybe we'll try to power this thing up again and see if we can get that to work. Okay, so I just got through changing the charge resistors, and let's, uh, there, should I, yeah, I should turn it like this so we can get a better view of the whole thing. Okay. Let's try powering her up now and see if it charges and wrecks. So, we'll turn the high voltage power supply on and we'll
Yeah, I see the spark gaps all firing. Let's let's take a look over on the side here. See that? All the spark gaps are firing. It's making a big pop in sound. There we go. I don't know if you can see that from this angle. Okay, we might have to wait until it gets a little bit darker and then we'll run it. But it looks like it is definitely firing up. Okay, things are getting a little bit darker here, so maybe we can see the sparks now. I'll turn down the charge a little bit. And... Working a little bit better earlier. I had the charge up. Oh, there we go. Sparks, spark gaps light up.